hello everyone welcome back to my channel in today's console tutorial i'm going to teach you how you can simulate heat transfer in the form of heat conduction in a 3d frying pan so i already solved the problem and you can see the results here this is a 3d frying pan and we have provided the heat from the bottom uh, 300 degrees celsius and then you can see the temperature profile so you can see that how the heat is transferred from the bottom of the 3d frying pan to the handle I'll take you through step by step guide to solve this simulation so make sure you stick till end to get your simulation done so let's start with the video so the first step is to select the spatial framework which means that either you are solving a 3d 2d or 1d problem so for obvious reason we are solving a three-dimensional problem so for that you need to first click on this add component and then you will have all those options here so in this case we are solving a 3d problem so just click on 3d so once you click on 3d a three-dimensional component will be added here as you can see here component number one it's a three-dimensional component and you, you can see the spatial frame coordinates in x y and z so once you add this component into your window so so automatically these three components will be added definition geometry and material so then after that we will add the physics and the mesh so the first thing is that we need to develop the geometry in our console so you can do in two ways so the first way is that you design your geometry in console by using the geometry tools that you can find here you can use all these tools and then build your geometry the second way is to use any 3d cat software like solidworks and katia design your model in that software and then convert into step format and import in console in this tutorial we imported this 3d frying pan which was built in the solidworks and then converted into step format and then imported into console so how we can import that so for that you need to right click on the geometry and then select this import so once you click on this import a new tab will appear here so in this import you need to come to this browse button click on browse and locate to the folder where your step file is placed so for example here your step file is placed so i will click on this and then click open so once you click that then you need to select build selected once you click the build selected your 3d frying pan will appear in the console window so the next step is to select this form union here you have two options form union or form assembly just make sure you select the form union and then this should be automatic and then select the build all or you go back to the geometry and click on the build all and you make sure whatever the unit you are looking for in this case the 3d pan is designed according to meter unit so you can convert to any other units so in this case i will stick with the meter so now the geometry step is done so once your geometry step is completed the next step is the assignment of the material to this 3d frying pan in this case we are using a stainless steel so how you can assign the material so for that you need to come to this material tab right click on the material and click on add material from library once you click that a new window will appear on the right hand side which will tell us that you can add the material so how you can add the material you need to click here then write the material you are looking for so i'm looking for stainless steel and then click search once you click on search you will get different materials for this tutorial i'm looking specifically for stainless steel 405 vanille so you need to double click on this material and the material will be added in the, under the material tab so once the material is added so you need to go back to this add material tab and then close so now we have successfully added our material into the material tab so if you come to this material so you will see different properties listed under this material so these all properties are used based on the physics that you're using so for example in this case we are using the we are going to use a heat transfer in the solid so we are going to use this thermal conductivity density and heat capacity the console software automatically detects which properties does it require for a specific physics after the assignment of the geometry and the material so the next step is the addition of the physics so how we can add the physics so you need to go to this physics tab and click on add physics once you click on add physics again a window will appear on the right hand side asking for the physics to add 
So we are solving a heat transfer problem. So you need to come and select this heat transfer and then heat transfer in solid. So once you double click on this heat transfer in solid, this heat transfer physics will be added in the model builder. So once the heat transfer physics is added, so just go back to this add physics and close this tab. So now we have successfully added our physics into the model builder. So now the next step is the assignment of the boundary conditions. So once you add this physics, you will only see this solid one initial values and thermal insulation. So these two boundary conditions we need to add separately. Before adding the boundary conditions, the first thing you need to make sure that so the domain should be selected in the heat transfer solid physics. So for example, this domain number one is the whole 3D frying pan. So make sure it should be added and the reference temperature should be ambient temperature. So the next thing is the solid one. For the solid one, you can see here this domain has been selected and the properties we need for this physics are thermal conductivity, density and heat capacity at constant pressure. So for each one, if you see that we have two options, from material or user defined. So in this case, we select the from material. So these three properties automatically will be taken from this material stainless steel. So now, so now you understand that for this physics, we need three, these three properties, thermal conductivity, density and heat capacity. So that's why for our material, these three properties are activated. And we have provided the value thermal conductivity 20 watt per meter Kelvin, density 7800 and heat capacity 480 joule per kilogram Kelvin. So now once you make sure that all the properties are taken from the material, the next step is the initial values. You don't need to change anything here. And after that insulation, also you don't need to change anything here. Now let's see how we can add the boundary conditions. So you need to right click on the heat transfer in for solids and then click on temperature. Once you click on temperature, this boundary condition will appear. So in this case, we are providing the temperature 300 degrees Celsius from the bottom of the pan. So you can see here I, was select, I have selected this bottom surface of the pan and the temperature is added 300 degrees Celsius. The next thing is that we need to add the heat flux. For that, right click on the heat transfer in solid and select the heat flux. So this heat flux condition will be added. So first of all, we need to select the boundaries so for the boundaries you can click in the center and then you can press ctrl and a once you press ctrl and a all the boundaries will be selected and after that you can come to this surface and then unselect the surface because this surface is the place where the heat is entering that we provided in this boundary condition so now you can see that we have uh, selected all the boundaries so once you make sure that all boundaries are selected the next thing is that you need to, to select the flux type if you click here, we have different options, the general inward heat flux, convective heat flux, nucleate heat rate. In this case, we are selecting convective heat flux. And under that, we have further options for heat transfer coefficient. So either is external natural convection, internal natural convection, external force convection or internal force convection. So in this case, I have defined user defined and I have provided the heat transfer coefficient, which is 10 watt per meter square Kelvin. And the uh, external temperature for the whole domain is 20 degrees Celsius. So now we are done with the boundary condition. So the next step is the meshing. So how you can define the mesh? If you see this mesh option here, that's really good. But if you don't, then don't worry. Just go to this mesh tab and click on add mesh and then click add mesh. Once you click on add mesh, a mesh will be added into your model builder. So now the mesh has been added we have two options user control or physics control in this case you need to click this and then select the user control so after that you need to right click on the mesh and select free tetrahedral so then if if when you click the this free tetrahedral will be added and then you need to right click on this and select the size so under this size make sure that the whole domain is selected and we have used the general physics and predefined and the size we selected is extremely fine. So now we are done with the mesh. So the next step is the study. If you don't see this study option here, then you need to select this study and then select here add study. Once you click the add study, the, on the right hand side you will see this window. We, we have different options for the studies. So one option is stationary, the other one is time dependent. In this case, we are going to do the time dependent study. So you need to double click on this once you double click on this time dependent then a time dependent study will be added here 
So once you edit the time dependent study, then go back and close this add study. Come back to time, time study. Under the time study, you have different options for the time. For example, you have minutes, sec seconds, hours, days. So in this case, I am selecting the minutes. So I selected the minutes and for the range, you need to click this one and then select the start time and end time and the step for each simulation. For in this case, I am simulating the heat transfer from 0 to 10 minutes with a step size of half minute. Then you need to click add. So once you click on add, your time step will be added. After that, you need to press the compute button and then it will take some time to solve the problem. Once the simulation is done, you can see the temperature profile here. So once I click, so you can see here uh, the temperature, nice temperature profile of the pan. So if I show you from the scratch, you, if you click here, you will see that the, at the start, at the zero minute, the temperature of the whole pan was zero degrees Celsius. And after half a minute, because we provided the temperature at the bottom of the pan 300, so you can easily see here the temperature at the bottom is around you can if you don't see you can pull this up a bit more and then see the temperature so if you if i click here it shows this is 300 if i click here it shows it's 23 degree so you can easily track the temperature on the whole object so now if you further press it it will show you the next time step which is one minute because we have taken 0 0.5 minute time step so you can see after one minute the temperature profile will look like this so if you struggle to find this temperature normally the console generates the temperature profile by itself but if you struggle to find it right click on the results then go to 3d once you add 3d you will get this 3d plot and then right click on this 3d plot and go to the surface plot so once you click on surface plot you will get this option and then if you want the temperature then right click on this one and then go to heat transfer in solids then you can go to the temperature and then click on temperature once you click on temperature the expression of temperature which is capital t will be added into the surface plot and then from here you can change the temperature unit for example i'm using degree celsius at the moment so similarly you can see the isothermal contour plots and also you can generate the animation so if you want to generate animation just right click on the export and then click on animation and click player so once you click that the animation will appear here if you want to run the animation you just come here and click on play it will take some time to process now you can see that our animation is ready and you can easily see that the time frames are moving and it shows that how the temperature is changing over the time if I want a continuous animation then I can come and click on repeat and I can click on forever and then if I press again then you can see here how the temperature profile is building over the time and the animation is running very nicely you can export this simulation by just stopping this one and then coming to this target and clicking on file so once you click on file then you can select the format that you want to export for example, if you want to export for GIF, AVI or WebM, then you need to select the location and after that you need to select the export. So once you click the export, the animation will be exported to the desired location. So thank you so much for watching the video. If you really like the video, please click the subscribe button and press the bell icon so you can get notification about upcoming console videos. See you in the next video.